You're live. All right. Very excited to have such a great group today join us for Hope Residence for a, what's going to be, I know, a great conversation on design with some really impressive panelists. So welcome. Thank you all for being here. Rose Bubois, we're going to have a great conversation. Thank you. So I'd, li I'd like to go ahead and begin introducing who we have with us today. Rita, I'm going to begin with you. Oh, Rita thank you. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's an honor. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Rita Sharabi discovered her passion for architecture and interior design at an early age. As the granddaughter of one of Morocco's pioneering women in real estate development of the 1950s. She followed in her grandmother's footsteps after graduating from Equal Commando School of Architecture and Design in Paris. Rita launched International Designers by Rita Sharabi in 2001, introducing her European design expertise and French art de vivre influence through modern luxury designs to residential and hospitality projects in the United States, Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa. The international design firm believes that diligence and attention to detail are the highest pillars of the design process, lessons Rita learned from her grandmother. For each project international designers undertakes, Rita relies upon her expertise and diverse skill set to extract each space's natural potential. Welcome, Rita. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Thank you very much for being here with us today. Thank you, too. Next, I'd like to introduce Nicole Fuller. Nicole Fuller is founder and principal of the Nicole Fuller Interiors. She's an internationally acclaimed interior designer renowned for her artfully appointed one-of-a-kind residential and commercial spaces. A member of El Decor Magazine's coveted A-list and Lux Magazine's gold list, Nicole's work is synonymous with sophisticated, nuanced luxury where attention to detail, savoir-faire, and a cultivated eye culminate in the spaces that are as singular as her clients. She believes in a holistic approach, and as such, her practice is a full-service design firm specializing in ground-up building, interior architecture, and art advising. No detail is too small. Nicole is known for custom designing furniture, textiles, wall treatments, even scents, for spaces that are unequivocally bespoke. Moreover, she is nimble in her approach, conversant in a wide range of aesthetic and styles, and that she has an intuitive knack for discerning her client's visual needs. Nicole, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> well, we're sure thrilled to have you. So thank you so much again for your time. Uh -oh. well, last but not least, Julianne Bigan is the general manager of the Southeast region and the communications director for the U.S. for the renowned international French furniture manufacturer, Roche Bubois. He supervises the operation in Florida and Washington for the brand, as well as all of the communication activities for the U.S. territory, including showroom management, cash flow management, logistic operations, staff management and development in the Southeast region, while also pursuing future development in Latin America. Prior to his current role, Julian served as managing director of Publicitas International Spa in Italy, commencing the Italian-based advertisers, such as Armani, Prada, Gucci, to American publications, such as the Washington Post, New York Times, CNN, and Glamour. Welcome, Julianne, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me here, it's a pleasure. So, super excited about you all and our conversation today. To begin with, beginning with you, Nicole, what has quarantine been like for you personally? Oh, well, yes, I think there's been a few stages of quarantine for, for us. And the first stage, we were very blessed to be upstate. We have a house in Millbrook in upstate New York. So we, were, we went there in mid-March and we were there for about four months. And I have to say, you know, it was very, uh, you know, very challenging, you know, with everything that was going on with the world. But for us, my, my you know, my my, my husband and I are healthy, our families are healthy, our teams are healthy, thank goodness, our friends. So, um, 
after that, we really, we had this beautiful backdrop to work remotely. My husband's an artist, so he turned our red barn into an art studio and he was painting and I was working, you know, in our breakfast room watching sort of like winter go away and spring happen around me and, and blossoms blooming. And it was, it was, it was really beautiful. And I, I felt very lucky and blessed to have been, you know, working in a place and have my team, you know, connected lots of Zoom lots of teams meetings and lots of teams meeting with clients. And um, we, we really were full force ahead pretty much through the whole pandemic, you know? So, so it was, you know, it was tough, obviously. It was one of the toughest things we've ever gone through, all of us, um, and very, very scary. But, um, you know, I was really trying to, I'm always a, a glass full kind of girl. So I was really looking for all the silver linings and, the lessons to be learned and you know how we can be better as a whole in, in our community and with our with our families and connecting more it was nice to sort of be a little disconnected in some ways and be more connected with your loved ones because we move so fast all the time but you know it's um you know i sort of take every challenge with a positive attitude so for me there were there were a lot of silver linings and i'm you know, fingers crossed. I was just saying to Julian, I said, if everyone just wears their mask for eight weeks straight, this virus will be gone. So, <laughs> um, fingers crossed, we're coming out on the other side soon. And you know, I don't know. So far, so good on in on, in New York on this side. But um, every day is a new a new challenge, and I know it's been really tough. But That's anyway, so yeah. Thank you, Nicole. Rita, how about you personally? You know, we, we started this to live in Miami this with, with maybe, you know, with Miami minds because we are very, uh, we have a different mind here from New York. And, and uh, first we, we start with to live this virus very cool, I think. And now we live uh, the worst days in Miami than ever, and maybe more than New York. and. Uh, we realize that it's very uh, worse situation, but we are very courageous. You, you know, in, here in Miami, we're still uh, working on work site and we're following our even even. I think we need to fight in the life, and 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 I think we we need to be courageous and to fight and to take all the the, the security and the you know the 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 to be safe, but. I, I'm very fight woman, and I don't want to 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 a virus kill my my life, my my work, and I want to fight. I want to fight, and I think and every day is a fighting fight, and uh, I don't want to 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 to. I want to be courageous, and uh, I'm I'm still working on my work site, and uh, I continue to go there, uh, wear my mask, and. Uh, Julian is on my side too. Uh, we are working on many, several projects here in Miami and we go to the work site and we are working every day on the work site. And I think that we need to take all the security and the safe uh, Asian, uh, uh, but we need to go forward and, and to fight this virus because if we don't do that, they're gonna kill this economy and we need to fight, we need to fight. Thank you, Rita. Thank you. Julian? Well, on the, on the personal level, I mean, I'm, I'm a father of three little boys, so it, it turned out a little bit unexpected, you know, in, in a week, you're a quick turnaround, you know, from, from one week in the school, the week after everybody's home. And as Nicole say, I mean, it's time to regroup a little bit, to slow down, to have your family around from morning to night. Uh, so the, the few first weeks uh, were Pretty fun, I have to say, besides the stress of the whole thing. Uh, after a while, of course, you realize that something has to change and you have to go back to work. You have to start doing something. Uh, and, and I think on a professional level, it's, it's been quite interesting because uh, at Roche Bourbois in particular, we've been trying to enhance all our tools, our virtual tools, uh, whether it's to visit the store virtually, whether it's to to present projects virtually, whether it's 
So you have to also connect with your teams. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm taking care directly of like six showrooms. So I need to, to, to see people normally and suddenly you cannot see them. But in a way, because I have six to go through, I mean, I've been seeing them probably more through Zoom than I've ever seen them like on a regular basis because you cannot be in like eight, nine places at the same time. So it, it's been teaching me a little bit how you can actually connect with your team nicely, even without seeing each other, because we have all these, as we're doing now, actually, we have all these new tools that seems more and more friendly to do, because I guess we be, we're becoming quite used to it. Uh, so it, it's been great. As Rita say, Florida is uh, probably, uh, we are privileged maybe to have the, a lockdown in Florida when you have a house, a pool, it's a good weather, you have a garden, I mean, as, as Nicole said, I mean, if you're upstate up there, it's also probably easier than if you are in a two bedroom in Manhattan. Uh, so it's, it's probably, it, it's been okay. Now, now, of course, we have to tackle it a bit differently again. Uh, they, they might lock us down again, maybe in two, three weeks, I don't know. Uh, but it's, it's gonna be fine, I guess. It's gonna be fine. Thank you, Julian. Moving over into design. What is the most popular request, and this is going to be to each of you, that you've been receiving from clients? And do you believe the pandemic is the direct result of this? Beginning with you, Nicole. Uh, yeah, well, you know what's so interesting now is, is for us, mudrooms, I think, are changing in the household because I think God forbid, but we may have this again in our lifetime. And I think the way we're sort of building ground up now for residential is that when we're building mudrooms, we want to make sure that we have a place to put the groceries, to disinfect the groceries, to take off your shoes, to then take off your clothes, take a shower, have a new set of clothes, and then come into the main space of the house. So we've been really working on redesigning sort of how you enter and exit the home to keep everything safe and sanitized. And in a way that's, you know, obviously beautiful and inspiring and exciting. Um, and another, two other really, really important things. One is, is wellness, you know, being able to take care of yourself in your home, because I think what happened in the pandemic with all of us, you know, we, you know, weren't able to, you know, take care of our, you know, see our acupuncturist, see our masseuse, see, you know, anyone who sort of works on your body or, or yoga or, you know, so to really have a spot in the home where you can meditate, where you can create your own sort of in-home spa, whether that's a very simple room that has a place where you can lie down an infrared mat, or if you can have an infrared sauna, you know, depending on the home, depending on the space, depending on what your needs are, I think it's really, really important to carve out a place in the home that you have your own sanctuary and you can quiet everything down and you can, you know, rejuvenate yourself physically and mentally because when you're not able to go out and, and pull, you know, inspiration from traveling or, you know, from the physical connection, I think it's really important to focus on looking inward and how to dig deep and find it within yourself. And the only way to do that is to have you know, mind, body, and spirit as one, as a triangle, as perfect harmony. So I think having a wellness moment and center in the house is going to be really important. And then third is home office is a totally different conversation now than, than it's been in the past. You know, we, we normally do a home office where, you know, it's, it's beautiful and there's books and there's objects and there's things and there's a place for you to throw your laptop and check a few emails. And now we're really thinking about home office as a dedicated, you know, his and her separate space. So, or, you know, his and his, hers and hers, whoever, um, so that you can really work remotely and be able to spread out and be comfortable, you know, and have your own space in the home. And, and also with that for, for children, for children to have a learning space. And, you know, we, we never really had, we had like a playroom before and, and you know, a, a game room or a theater room or whatever. And now it's, you know, it's really important that everyone sort of has their own space to work in the home. Uh, you know, as we, as we see things perhaps are happening more remotely now and we're not sure exactly when this is ending or if it will ever happen again. So I think as we're doing new builds, it's, it's really important to sort of think about how you live and how you've lived during this 
pandemic and what you wish you could have had, you know, and, and I have a lot of our clients, you know, that are buying new homes now and saying, you know, gosh, I wish I had, I have a holiday home that we fly to, but I wish I had a holiday home that I could drive to, you know, so there's a lot of, a lot of these things coming up and it's a, a lot, a lot, you know, more focus in, in those areas and the design part of it. And, and, and really, you know, making your home your sanctuary. I think that's really important now more than ever <laughs> for sure yeah for sure for sure thank you nicole rita how about you i think we we live a, a real traumatized with this pandemic it's very hard i think it's very very hard and i i, I totally agree with nicole i think today and in the future i don't think that the re, the normality is going to come back as before, I, th I think it will be take it will take time, and I think it's very important to 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 create a peaceful ambience in our home uh, more than ever. And uh, I think that with what we are experiencing today, we will spend more time and in our homes, and we will need comfort and inside and peaceful almost peaceful because i think we are very stressful with what we 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 listen we see from the tv and we are very it's very aggressive you know and i think it's very important to 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 find the this peaceful in in inside our home and it's a very hard situation i mean you know it's a very particular and very hard situation. I think we we ne we will never forget this situation, and I hope I hope with all my heart that uh, people are gonna take the good uh, you know uh, lesson about this experience because all the world now is on the same situation, and I hope because unfortunately uh, human being forget forget when everything passed they forget I, I really I really hope that uh, people they never forget and we bring and take lesson from this this hard experience people die and uh, I think we really need to, to to respect nature to be connected with the nature we we forget you know the 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 the, the um, we try to burn the step because we are very smart. We are a race, very smart. Human beings are very smart. We forget that we need to respect the modern nature. We, we forget that we, speak, that we need to respect animals. And I think it's very important and I hope that humans that now understand that we are all together. We are just one and we are living in earth and we need to respect earth. We need to respect the 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 hearth and i th i hope i really hope that this worst and very hard experience we can um, make us together all the race you know i'm from uh, a arabic culture i'm from french culture and i am i think i'm i am the best example that all the race all the the human can live together and then can respect themselves and I really hope that uh, human beings they can grow up and 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 respect all the race, all the animals, all the, we are all un, un, unite, un, united in this experience, bad experience, and we need to respect the herd. We must. Thank you, Thank you. Julian. Well, I, I'm looking at that to a more commercial point of view because I'm not myself an interior designer. So I have it through basically the, the different needs of clients are coming through what we sell them. And at the moment we have two different really clear categories of client buying a home during the pandemic, like quick turnaround with like, I want it now. Uh, I just bought it because I cannot be in my condo anymore. I want to move out. I want to go upstate in New York. I want to come and live in Florida from the some New Yorkers at the time. So we had a lot of these kind of uh, very quick requests. Uh, we did have also experience a lot of office uh, remodel 
Uh, so you see that through the sales of our uh, desks, for example, or office chairs, and uh, because people realize that not only now, because it's uh, mandatory to work from home, but maybe some people open their eyes to, or maybe also in the future, because it's not that bad actually to work from home from some profession that can do that, of course. Uh, we're talking with, of course, as you can imagine, uh, very privileged clients, wealthy people. Uh, this is probably not the real picture of the whole United States, uh, but in our environment, I mean, this is, this is going to be a change yeah, after that. And this is already changing now, and I think it's not going to stop in that sense. So home offices, we don't sell gym equipment, so we didn't see that. We don't sell a sanitation uh, room, so we don't do that. But we do sell uh, desks, so we have that category of client and the kind of quick ship program that are more and more requested because probably clients also think if there is a second wave and it looks like unfortunately it could be a second wave sometime by the end of the year in Europe and here, I imagine that the, the people who can afford, they, they're probably thinking, I don't want to live in my same sofa again. I don't want to live in my same home again because it hasn't been that great. So we are, I, I hate to say that, but we have been benefiting a little bit from that in terms of, of furniture. Based on, based on what you've been seeing on the side of the business that you're on, what do you foresee being the future of the interior design business based on what you've seen on your end? Well, if I may say, I mean, we've been starting already some time ago at Roche Bobois to enhance uh, the 3D tools uh, to be very uh, visual, you know, in what we're doing. So we, we do a lot of projects without even meeting the client once sometimes, you know, they, they call and we have all the 3D tools in store. We're collaborating with designers. We can talk the same language than them. Uh, it's not rare that we do projects outside of the U.S. Uh, we at the moment <coughs> a very big Bahamian in the Bahamas project, and the client called from London is French. They are living in the Bahama. We probably never going to meet the client, but everything has been done through WhatsApp to start with, then Zoom, then of course we've been providing all plans, talking with their designer on site. So the brand has been ready already to do. Uh, almost like a virtual presentation to clients without a, and, and I guess it's going to be no matter what, now with this pandemic, now with the fact that probably people, we hesitate more to travel so easily. Uh, it, it was, I think, already the future, but maybe it's going to be accelerating a little bit all those processes. Thank you, Julian. Nicole, over to you. What are you perceiving in the future? based on your experience, what you've seen in interior design? I, I, think, I think everything, you know, I think unfortunately and, and fortunately, because we'll be more prepared, you know, all of us in our homes, you know, hotels, you know, we're, we're designing a couple of hotels at the moment. And even in, in the way we're designing the hotels and the rooms and, you know, the spa and the gym, you know, there's a lot more of, you know, there's, just a room where you have like your private training, you know, you'll have your treadmill, you know, you'll have your weights, you'll have your mat. And instead of doing one massive gym, we're sort of separating, separating it all out and giving each, each, each and every person their personal space and doing much smaller sort of communal spaces in certain areas. And, and I think that, you know, the te te technology of it all is so key and so important because you know, in, in, for example, the hotel we're doing in LA, your, your car sort of parks itself. So, you know, you don't really need to deal with, you know, handing off a ticket or getting a valet or, you know, it's good and bad because I think human connection is so important to live. And I think, you know, we don't want to take jobs away from the workplace, but I do think technology plays a huge factor and it's going to benefit us in keeping our social distancing skills sharp um, but I, I think, I think design, you know, it's always going to be based in beauty and, and, you know, what the client wants, whether it's commercial or residential. And I think it's just as exciting now as it's ever been. I actually think it, it's even more exciting because there's so many challenges to think about and overcome now. And, and we've been pressed to think a bit of a different way, you know, and 
for us in our firm, we want to we want to think ahead for our clients. So we want to think ahead of how we can add to, you know, the home, the san- the sanctuary, the 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 hotel, the the spa. You know how we can how we can play it forward. You know, sort of think for the future, and 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 be prepared. You know, for now and and for every day. And and really, to me, you know, I grew up sort of half New York and half Europe, and to me, it's, it's, it's sort of adapting a European way of life. You know, it's, it's being in your home, it's being with your loved ones, it's having, you know, a smaller social circle, you know, that you're communal with, being able to, if you're, if you're able to have outdoor space, designing it in a way that you're set up to, you know, have dinner parties out there, have some, you know, fun things you can do outside together. Um, think about the outdoors in a different way as well. Even if it's a small terrace in, in a Manhattan apartment or Miami condo, you know, I think even working with our developer clients, we're thinking more about outdoor space, you know, because if you're quarantined, like it's so nice if you, even if you have a little, a little terrace, you know, and, and, or a wraparound terrace. I mean, there's so many things you can do with such a small bit of outdoor space, you know, uh, in the cities. So I think, I think we're, we're being challenged now with a lot of exciting new design ideas, whether it's, you know, coming from uh, how do we maximize how we live in our homes, A, and B, how can technology help us and, and be safe and, and be efficient? So I, I think there's a lot of change, but I think a lot of the changes for the good and, and, and I agree it's, it's important to be connected with the planet, you know, take off your shoes, you know, walk on your, on your, on your, in your home without shoes. I mean, even, even this simple thing, we've always been a shoeless home, but the fact that you now take your shoes off, you know, and, and you're grounded in your home and your feet are touching the ground. I mean, it's basics in life, but we, we went so far away from that, you know? And I think just thinking about your home or your, or your hotel room or your, your condo, whatever it is as, as your sanctuary and, and, and bringing all those aspects into it, I think is so key. And, and so it's exciting though, you know, because it's how to, you know, different things, you know, how do we, what, where do we put the shoes? Do we have slippers? Do we do this? Do we, th- you know, so you really think about things in a different way and, and, and especially for the hotels and how things are packaged and marketed and wrapped. And it's very individualized now, which, which is nice. You know, it's, 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 it's very unique. You know, it's very unique. And, um, and then if I may say, Nicole, maybe then you can solve my problem because I have really the boys, they're shoeless outside. <laughs> <laughs> My problem is when they go inside. <laughs> Julian, well, I'll Can call you after. Can you fix me that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll call you after, Julian. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Good stuff. Last but not least, Rita, over to you, your take. Listen, I, I, I'm a philosophy, philosoph woman, you know? For the moment, we don't know what is the future of nothing, you know? I, I, I mean, I'm a very positive woman, but we cannot talk about the future because right now we need, we need to get out to, 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 to we need to, t- to find a, a final history to this situation. I mean, I mean, we, th- we must first, uh, for myself, I'm a very positive woman, you know, I, I, I'm going to be honest, I'm, I wear the mask, but I continue my life as before, because I refuse that a virus uh, uh, change my life. I, I, I take all the security that I must to take, but I don't want to, 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 I don't want to change my life, I refuse. And if I if I must if I if I must to die I'm gonna die and it's the life I mean we we, we are born to, to to grow up and to die and I don't want to, to I want to fight but I, I don't talk I can talk about the future I can say to one thing interior design is something very important is the beauty is the luxury is the uh, is the is the the thing that people can feel, feel themselves with peaceful in, in their home and, 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 and 
for the developer, it's very important to, you know, I, I see very different reaction on my, in my clients. I have some clients with a private house and I, I asked them, I, list, I said, listen, do you want to stop your work site and take a break? And there is some client that, that they say, yes, almost in Europe, in Morocco too, because uh, Morocco, uh, the king of Morocco take a very, uh, you know, a decision to, to close the, the, the country. And in the United States, I have here in Miami, uh, a very courageous uh, clients. Then they said, no, Rita, we go forward. We, 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 don't, want, we don't want to stop. We want to, 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 to continue on your work side, our work side. Please do like it, it's a normal situation. And you know, they don't, they don't get the COVID-19 and they are very well, they are very healthy. And the developer too, they don't, they don't have choice. They have credit, they have, they have a colossal uh, uh, credit and they, they must to move forward. I mean, I want to say something. Of course, there is a risk of our healthy and we need to take uh, some uh, healthy precaution. But we, need, we must to be uh, uh, conscious that if we, we uh, go to this scared situation and, and follow this scared situation and go to this panic situation, we're going to die because we're going to we're gonna kill this economy. Then I know that human being is fight. Uh, the human the, is fight, uh, fight, uh, fight uh, profile. We need to fight. We, we don't need to 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 be scared about this. If I mean, it's it's very uh, maybe it's very uh, hard what I said. But if we go forward and and be scared and we are uh, scared about this situation, we're gonna die. We're gonna die if. Even from the, you know, in, in, Liban, in Lebanon, people there uh, uh, die and there is many suicide because there is, uh, they, they don't have to, something to eat now. Then the future of the interior design is like the future of everything. I mean, we are, we, we need to understand now that we are connected. And the future of the interior design is the future of the architecture, is the future of the developers, and it's the future of everything. We need to be very closely and, and to fight this virus and to find a way and to, 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 to go and to move forward on this and uh, to, to kill this virus. We, don't let, we must to leave, not leave this virus kill us. We need to kill this virus. And I think the intro design never die because it's amazing job. It's amazing. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, it brings very uh, happiness to to people. It. it I mean, when I when I see my clients, I have a very um, close relationship with my clients. And when I, I it's when I see their their home dreams realized, they are very happy and they are very grateful and. I mean, interior design is a, is amazing job. It's amazing job, and I'm very grateful about uh, to have discovered this this uh, this job very a, a little bit late because I I start with another career. But I think the future if the, of interior design is very closely to of the future of our uh, life of, of of our economy. And the nature of our living. Yeah, of course. You know, listen, if I don't want to, to talk about politics. I'm very passionate woman on every uh, subject. But I mean, when you see the laboratory, they take these animals and they take, they do whatever you, they want with. And when you see some country that they use animals and they, they are selling on the market without I mean, it's amazing. How can people do that? And how can they imagine that there will be not any result about this, this action? I mean, we are all living with, with the herd and we must respect animals is a race. 
and must to be respected like human. I mean, and I think there is very, people need to be educated. And I mean, we are paying for another culture, for another country, but it is the result of non-respect of animals. I mean, you cannot eat and, 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 and have a market of some animals and use it and, and you do whatever you want with, you know, I love animals. I, 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 have, I have a zoo in my house. <laughs> <laughs> and and I mean we are we are responsible what what happened now. Yeah, there's I mean, there's yeah. so much, and that's a whole other conversation. But there's yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. but it, it, it's true. We are, we are responsible. I'm very, very angry <laughs> as an interior designer too because we are we are paying the bill. You know. Rita, so, so much passion, and I know so much love in all that yeah, you do. True, it's true. Julian, uh, congratulations to you. Rita told us that she had selected Roche Boubois to provide Thank furniture you. to some of her top luxury properties here in Miami. Thank you. Do you often collaborate with designers? And what was different this time about working with Rita? What are your favorite design aspects of the projects that you've done with her together so far? Of course. Uh, well, thank you, Rita, already that she, she chose us for a couple of very spectacular projects very, very recently. I mean, literally in the middle of the pandemic almost. Uh, at Roche Bobois, we've been always having, a, I would say, a 50-50 database of uh, direct clients and interior designers uh, visiting the stores. <clears throat> so this is not, of course, the first time we, we do work with interior design. Um, in that case, it's a bit more special because in Miami, for a couple of years now, we've been starting some deeper collaboration with some uh, design uh, firms to do model residences in some of these uh, very attractive luxury condominium of Miami. So we, we started like a couple of years ago with the model of the Porsche Tower, and then we continued at the... 1000 Museum from the uh, Now we are starting and we will finish the installation as we speak with the last wallpaper on the wall <clears throat> at the new tower from Jean Nouvel in, uh, in Miami Beach, the Monat Terrace. And this is the collaboration with, with Rita. And right before that, we also did some spectacular villa. And one of them is actually, again, with Rita uh, at the beginning of the year that has just been finished, installed during the pandemic, literally during the lockdown. So we've been uh, going around still uh, with our logistic team to install a, a spectacular estate on uh, Palm Island, Miami Beach. <clears throat> uh, it, it's, of course, very different because when we do have designers or clients coming in our store to just buy a few pieces for their new living room on your new we are not passive but we are we are just guiding them a little bit but they know more and and, and it's a different it's a relation of uh, it's a commercial relationship uh, in the case with Rita here what we did is that we give her free hands on those two projects. So she could choose whatever she likes from the collection. She could choose the style. She could choose the theme of what she wanted to do with those spaces. Uh, Rita, I think in, in a very smart and clever way has been using our uh, fashion designer collaboration at Roche Beaubois, which has been happening for many, many years now. So we do collaborate with designers, fashion designers, <laughs> or the Missouri Home Fabrics, we do have Christian Lacroix for Roche Beaubois also. So Rita took um, the initiative and, and tackled the project with giving this um, haute couture kind of look of Roche Beaubois uh, together with those fashion collaborations. So she's branded and she's been branding either the villa or even the, the Monat Terrace apartment with a complete fashion kind of uh, angle. So in the villa, there are a few rooms that are basically all inspired by some of those fashion collaborations. So we have the dining room by Christian Lacroix for Roche Beaubois, and we have the main living room is with Kenzo Takara for Roche Beaubois, and then we have Jean-Paul Gaultier for Roche Beaubois for the family room. So, and, and I would say she, 
she kept that inspiration also at the at Mona Terrace for Jean Nouvel. So now the, the, the new model apartment is a Jean Paul Gaultier uh, residence for Roche Beaubois, almost done by uh, Rita Shrivey and uh, and so on and so forth so she she really chose her style uh with no restriction and it's very fresh from us to, to see a designer working with our collection uh, it's it's a collection that you can customize a lot uh but we tend to sell as shown in our store because for clients it's easier to understand uh, but it's very interesting for me to see a, a complete look of a home with roche Bobois done by a designer because this is where the true essence of Roche Beaubois in terms of uh, creativity, innovation, quality, uh, you can really see those values there. It's, uh, it's a very interesting journey, you know, to, for, for us to do that. And, and the results are, are very spectacular, I have to say. Not a, a stunning brand that's continuing to get placed in some iconic properties and residences. So It is. It Great is. collaboration. It's a great collaboration, but almost it's a very, uh, you know, Roche Beaubois. I, I, I like Roche Beaubois because it's a very uh, interesting approach for some project that I, uh, I carry on uh, in Miami. You know, uh, for example, Monat Terras, I was very impressed by the, by the work of Jean Nouvel, who designed this building, and he's a renowned French uh, architect. I think this year, He's the second most important architect in the world. And you know, when I, when I go there and, I, and the developer, he, he made for me a tour to vi visit the project. I was impressed because I saw that the work of John Nouvel was uh, as a fashion designer dressed a top model. And I said, okay, because I need, I, I must to tell a story for each project. It's very important for me, I, I think. I, you already know so that I'm a very passionate woman <laughs> and I need, I must to tell a story and uh, I must to, to, to see a, a project as a unique project, very different uh, for, uh, well, yeah, very different, very unique. And when I, when I saw this project, I said, okay, I'm going to use a fashion, a French fashion designer and I think it will be very great. And I was, I, I saw that it was very interesting to use the, a fusion between the, between the interior design and the fashion design. I love this, this, this fusion, you know? And if you see the, the interior design of this building, it's amazing because it's like, it's very sophisticated, very elegant, and you feel the, the the fashion design in with the fusion of interior design for for the palm island one the 135 palm island it's a very different story because it's a spectacular house i mean uh, the developer sabal development is going to be sold this house at 35 million dollars and you know this i want for this house something very spectacular very uh, hollywood scenario and I, I thought that it was very interesting to bring all the fashion designer inside this house and to have this spectacular style. And I love to, to, to tell a story for, for a project. I, don't, I, I do not like to, to talk about style or about trends. It's a very particular relationship between me and the project. Well, great partnership again, Rita, with their fashion and Julian with the iconic brand. So, thank you. Fantastic. Nicole, over to you. So, we've heard here through the grapevine about two new hotel projects that you're doing. One's on the East Coast, another's on the West Coast. Are you able to share any details with us? <laughs> yes, yes. Um... I am. Uh, they are two very exciting projects. The one on the East Coast is the, the Bryan Park Hotel. So we are redesigning the Bryan Park Hotel from the ground up. And it is, it's a dream come true, being a native New Yorker. It's an iconic building. It's part of the skyline. I mean, it's, it's just an incredible, incredible structure. It's landmarked. And we are basically gutting it, you know, the entire inside. So 
rebranding, you know, everything, everything. So we're designing A to Z from, from the rooms to the lobby, to the restaurants, to the hallways, to the elevator banks, down to the new fragrance, the bathrobes, the slippers, the stationery, the whole thing. So it's, it's really, really an exciting project. And, and our client is just incredible. And, and he's, on board for all of it and he's it's great it's just been really really a dream come true and we've been working very hard we the hotel won't be closing so we'll be designing floors at a time essentially so it'll probably take a little longer to to redo the whole thing than than we all would like but it's such a busy hotel and and the, they'll be staying open through the entire remodel so um yeah yeah it's and it's right on the park and and it's you know the way it was built there's the ceilings are high and the rooms are grand and you know even even the single rooms are so grand i think we have 13 foot ceilings in some of the rooms and it's just it's ex exquisite it's really really exquisite and it'll be not you know it's very spectacular very unique very um very different to what it is now but um very exciting as well and then on the West Coast, we are designing a hotel um, called the Arts District Center. We're designing the hotel uh, residences and, you know, ground up everything. So I've been on the project for six years and we have just broken ground. So that's very, very, very exciting as well. And the hotel is sort of focused around the history of art. It's, it's downtown LA, so it's in the actual arts district in LA. And I don't know if you know, but art, you know, LA's had an incredible, the art scene in LA is just booming. And it's, it's all sort of based around art, so it's an artful hotel. So I'm curating the art for it, uh, as well as sort of designing around certain pieces and, and working with local artisans and artists to do you know great murals and just really interesting things again um tapping into the community there to to make it feel very authentic la but rooted in the development of art history around the world so you know we've researched all the art all the arts districts around the world so london paris new york la you know you name it we've we've sort of researched it we've taken all this all these years to sort of really develop the the concept and it's it's really really exciting i was raised by a mother who is an artist and i married an artist <laughs> so it's it's really you know it's in my blood and 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 you know being an artist myself it's it's a dream it's a dream come true to to be able to design an entire property around the arts essentially so uh yeah it's it's very exciting we have some we have some really great things going on and um yeah, these are just two of, the, two of the hotels that are really, really wonderful. Major undertaking. What yes. <laughs> is on, you know, when creating, I mean, essentially creating a hotel brand, how would that be a little bit different? I'm uh, sorry, can you repeat that? Sure. What would go, what is going on with those projects? Like when you talk about coming in and undertaking these two substantial projects and really essentially creating a hotel brand, working in tandem? Well, you know, I think being a connoisseur a little bit of, of you know, hotels myself, you know, I travel extensively. I, we have clients all over the world. So not so much at the moment, but, you know, I think for me, it's really dissecting why some of my favorite spots around the world are my favorite spots and what what really makes it work and how can we bring all of the best elements of of every hotel or every property that i've ever stayed at and how do we bring that into one and create a brand around it and i think i think when you're branding a hotel what's really important is everything needs to you know be unified and it needs to have a very specific point of view. And I think there are certain, certain things that just, you know, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm even doing the, the playlist for the music. I think, I think when you walk into a space, whether it be a home or a hotel or a restaurant or a spot, 
when you walk in and you smell the smell that you love and the music's playing and the lights are layered and it's all this beautiful romantic vibe and you just feel great you know you just feel beautiful in that space and you just don't want to leave <laughs> sure. i think you know you got to dig deep and think what is that you know what is that that's something that's that is very hard to capture and, and very few get it right so we've spent years you know researching and so I, I feel very confident and very excited to launch these properties because it is the attention to detail and 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 i think that's what makes it so so great and so specific when you're branding and marketing anything i think the attention to detail is everything i think you know i mean for myself i'm a workaholic i'm I share Rita's passion in many things. And, <laughs> you know, as soon as the sun's, I'm up early when the sun sets, I, I get a second win. So I think that, you know, it's really, really going through everything with a fine tooth comb and, and figuring out what the right bed linens are, what the right mattress is, what the right height of that mattress is, you know, layering the lights, um, the, the, the logo, the, the, you know, the colors, what's soothing, what's exciting, what's inspiring. What, what's the name of it? The, can, can you pronounce it? You know, I mean, there's so much that goes into marketing from the aesthetic A to Z, you know, and, and, and we've done this for a few brands now. And, and it's something I really, really enjoy. Uh, you know, it's, and it's aside from the deter interior design, it's the interiors. It's, you know, the, the marketing and branding, like you said, it's curating the art. And it's, it's really the whole package. And I think that's what makes the best of the best hotels great. And it sounds like you derive a lot of your inspiration too from from art and from your background affiliation with that. So I think yes, gonna... yes, I do. It's it's a big part of my inspiration, pretty much in everything. I mean, I, I see art in, in many things. I see art in organic forms in nature, in 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 you know travel and people. I, I you know I see art in many things, but you know art as a whole is is very important to me. But what's interesting, what I'm going to tell you is the Bryan Park Hotel is the absolute opposite of the Arch District Hotel. Right. There will be no art on the walls in the Bryan Park Hotel whatsoever. <laughs> so it's, it's interesting. It. It's an interesting challenge for me because art is such an integral part of how I design. And, and you know, whether I start with designing a home around a piece of art or you know, curate the collection as we go. It's, you know, in art and objects are very important to me, creating very unique spaces that aren't trendy, that are timeless and, and, and having pieces that you want to have for life. And you may want to move around to different homes. It's, it's about curating a collection, whether it be art that hangs on the wall, sculpture, your beautiful books, your, your, your beautiful pieces in your home. It's, it's all sort of an artful way of thinking. And that's really my approach to design and whether it be uber minimal or maximal, I mean, it's just, it, it really depends on the client and the client's needs and, and really bringing their heartbeat and who they are into the home, into the space, bringing my client for the Bryan Park Hotel into his space. He loves art. He's, he's a big collector, but he feels very strongly that his hotel should be a place very calming very quiet there shouldn't be art on the walls it should be a place for people to come and sort of imagine their own creative space so it's it's interesting and, and I'm, I'm loving the challenge you know we're, we're we're using really great textures and plasters and you know bringing in historians uh, who, who are artisans from from europe to do these specialty finishes that you've never seen before and they're just they're quiet and they're soft but they're it's art in its own but it's not a piece of art hanging it's not a sculpture it's not a photograph you know so it's um it's interesting and I'm, I'm loving i'm loving the challenge you know it's it's a minimal approach and it's it's really quite beautiful so but you know i love both sides of the spectrum so <laughs> i surround myself with artists i grew up in the art world so yeah <laughs> well congratulations to two incredible projects and i can't wait to see the end results Thank you. Thank you so much. We're the team and I are very, very excited. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. Julian, over to you. When choosing a project for 
for Roche Bouvois to collaborate on, what are some of the most important characteristics that you're looking for? Is there a particular style that you prefer? Well, as you know, we, we are the ones suggesting the pieces to interior designers. So yep. it's not that we choose the project, they choose us, you know, sometimes for our pieces. And, uh, but I think that most of the interior designers, when they come to Roche Bobois and they start to understand and to, to dig into the collection, uh, we, we have three core values at Roche Bobois. One is quality, because obviously at that price point, you need a bit of quality to show to clients. And the other two that are, I think, more for interior designers is innovation and creativity. Uh, the collection, because it's very customizable, uh, you can do a lot. I mean, there's a lot of options that you can customize your pieces on the standard ways uh, that it's very difficult for me to prefer one thing more than another. Uh, we, have, we have a bit for everybody. I mean, we can go to a very colorful, flamboyant, bohemian chic style and we can go to a very minimalistic, uh, uber minimalistic, as, as Nicole said before, uh, a sofa. So, uh, I, mean, I mean, you can you can ask Rita afterwards, but uh, she, she's been using all kind of pieces at Roche Bobois in the same project, meaning something very, very flamboyant, like a dining set from Christian Lacroix Maison for Roche Bobois, and back to a very minimalistic sofa uh, that is, very, very pure, very, very clean. Uh, so it's, it's, it's difficult for me to, to choose because I, I don't want to be arrogant, but you can probably find whatever you want at Roche Bobois in terms of styles. I mean, there are very, very few little things that you won't find. I mean, considering that we also selling from the accessories to the wall coverings. I mean, there's very little that we don't do. Uh, so it's, uh, it's an interesting brand, but you have, to, you have to dig in a little bit in the collection. It's, it's, it's very deep as a collection. Uh, as soon as you start to understand a bit better, uh, you can have a lot of fun, I guess. There's a lot of breadth, I found, in the collection. It is. It is, it is. Thank you, Julianne. Rita, over to you. Looking back and up to this point at um, all of your work, what is the project that you're the most proud of? Sorry, could you please repeat the questions? So looking back over your work, all of your work, up until mm -hmm. this point, what is the project that you're the most, most proud of? Oh my God, your questions is very delicate. No, I, I cannot say that I am proud of all my project because it all my babies, <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, um, one thing that Julian, he just said, I'm very proud of all my projects because uh, I really commitment on my project. And when I, when I design a project, I, I, I really want to, to be this project unique and very different than I, I'm very, I think I have a little a side crazy in my, in my personality and my work. And I, I know that I, uh, Julia, he, he becomes often crazy with me because <laughs> I know he suffer with me. It's not only crazy <laughs> because uh, uh, my my work is crazy. It's true because you know I, I'm very different. I I I'm, I go over the boundary. I break I broke the, I break the all the boundaries, and I I I I don't I do not like the conformity. I'm very I'm one hundred percent commitment to my project. Then. I, I often fight with Julian and you know <laughs> because my project is my 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 priority and I I don't I don't have any style I don't have any trends I, I don't follow any trends I I'm very uh, different that that the trends of the year and and I, I, I try to understand a space, to, to listen to the space. I'm very, I'm very philosophic all, also on my work. And I, I love to match different style. You know, I, I, don't, I do not like to, to, to follow just one style. 
and I'm very proud of all my project because I cannot say that I, I, I'm, proud, I'm proud of one project more than the other one because it means for me that I lose the other one. You understand what I mean? All my projects are very different. Right now, I have another project but with another brand. It's a minority brand. It's a 2000 Ocean Island. I'm very proud of this project too. I cannot say too much about it because I promised to the developer that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep the secret because he, he planned to launch, <laughs> he planned to launch the, his marketing campaign uh, maybe in September. Yep. Um, I love this project too because I, 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 I saw this project, I was there and he invited me to, 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 to visit this project and, and I saw this sea view and I, and I felt a connection with, with the nature, with the ocean view. I fall in love and I try to, to, to work on this project to connect the building on, on, on the, on the, uh, with the modern nature. And I, I told you, I'm proud of all my projects because all my projects tell a story. And this is the most important for me. I must to tell a story. I, I never do a project if I cannot bring up from this project a story and something very philosophic. And yeah, I'm very proud of all my projects. All of your work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Rita. So we're, we're coming to the end of our hour. So I'd like to close out beginning with you, Nicole. Final takeaways, looking ahead through the remainder of 2020 in interior design and the way that you see the, the pandemic, the quarantine affecting the remainder of the year in terms of, of design requests from clientele. Oh, goodness. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Well, you know, I think that, like I was saying before, I think it's, you know, I think we're learning what the requests are going to be every day, you know, a little bit more. But I do feel that creating a home or a commercial space that is a sanctuary and is really mindful about being able to be safe in inside of it, whether that means, you know, how you enter and exit or, you know, if it's a hotel room, how the hotel has their policies in place. Um, I, I think, I think it's going to be a lot to do with certain technology, but I also think, you know, a lot of, if, if somebody was budgeting, you know, three vacations that year, and not maybe putting so much into their home. I think everything shifted a bit now. I think if, if people need to budget for something, I think a lot more of that budget is going into everyone's space, you know, and, and even commercial spaces as well. I think for restaurants, you know, we're, we're, we're seeing how outdoor space, you know, and climates that can handle the outdoor you know, is, is so imperative and it's so important. You know, we have lots of uh, offices in Los Angeles and a satellite office in London. And, you know, we've, we've watched London over the years figure out how to have more outdoor space for dining and for their hotels. And I think we're really gonna start seeing a lot more of that commercially, and whether even in, in colder climates, how to, how to have heat lamps and how to have ventilation. And I think, you know, that's, that's going to be something we see in, in, in hospitality projects. And I think for home, people are really putting, putting, doing everything they want to do for their home. You know, they, they're, if they've been quarantined and they were cooking in the kitchen and they never liked two things in that kitchen, they're, they're now gutting the kitchen and making it everything they want it to be. And, and, and having theater rooms and media rooms and, you know, spaces in the home and, and, and really putting, putting their dollars into themselves, you know, investing back into themselves, which is their home, their sanctuary, their families, and buying, you know, uh, Julianne said, you know, we have a lot of clients that during the pandemic and continue now, uh, and, and you see in the times today, it was, you know, how, how, 
how many second or third or fourth homes can I buy that I can drive to that are easy access? That's something I can drive to that's on the water if I live in the city or if I live in Miami, where can I go? You know, buying a home on Fisher Island, whatever it is, you know, people are buying more homes, different apartments, places where they can go and, and feel safe, you know, and feel luxury around them and feel sanctuary and feel that they have a lot of space. And I think that's the future of interior design over the, over the, you know, for the, for the future, definitely over the next six, eight, nine, 12 months. But I, I think people are, no one could have ever have imagined, you know, I mean, when we were first quarantined, I thought, oh my God, two weeks. How am I going to, what, what, what do you mean two weeks? I mean, my husband took me kicking and screaming to the country. <laughs> I mean, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a city girl. So I was, you know, you're crazy. What are you, what are you talking about? And cut to four months. We're now back in the office. You know, we're now back in the office. We're going to start opening back up in LA. And, you know, it's, um, it's, it's to Rita's point. It's figuring out how to go about our day to day in a normal way, wearing our masks, having our sanitizer, having everything we need to do. And it's about, it's really about designing our dream spaces and really investing back in ourselves, our homes, for our developer clients, really investing back into, okay, how are we designing this building? You know, the common areas, let's be mindful of, of how things happen during this pandemic and all the new protocols we had to put in place. You know, how do we design getting your mail and package rooms and, you know, on the hospitality side and for the hotel side, how do we, uh, how do we have enough space for everyone to dine and be social at a distance? You know, so it's, I, I think this is going to be part of our conversation for a very long time. And I do think once we have a cure and once we have a vaccine, people forget, you know, I mean, people will forget, you know, things, things go back, but I, I don't think, I, I think things have changed a little bit forever. And, and I think we can turn all of that into a positive. And with the design, I think it's, it's, it's just about creating, creating a beautiful space wherever you are that functions really well, better than you ever thought it actually could. So I, I think it's about the future of design is investing in yourself as a client and, and you know, challenging us to really maximize each space to, to get everything you want out of it, whether it be a 40,000 square foot home or a 2,000 square foot pied de terre or a boutique hotel or, you know, a 300 room hotel. I think it's, it's really, we really have to think forward for our clients and, and bring, them, bring them design and advice for the future. That's exciting and inspiring. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Rita, over to you. What is the question, please? So looking at the remainder of 2020, so going through the remainder of 2020 and then talking about the quarantine and the pandemic that we've all been through, what do you think the takeaways are from that that will affect interior design through 2020, through the remainder of the year? For 2020? You know, we are in July, <laughs> 2020. <laughs> we have a few more months. <laughs> Five more months you know, to go. Yeah, because, you know, I am very honest. And we just live again this second wave in Miami. I mean, New York is now just little by little return to a normal life. But we are now living a second wave, we don't understand nothing because we, we thought that we, we were, you know, peace. But now, since five days, it's a very, it's a, it's a serious panic in, 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 in Miami. And I, I, I'm a very honest person. We, we are moved forward on our project because our client, they don't have no choice, you know? What, I mean, about, a 2000 ocean of, um, I mean, I, I talk about my, my, my project, my clients, but I think 2020 is a year very special. And I think we need to, to, to thought and to, to think about 2000, 2000, 2000, 2021. I think this year is dead. 
<laughs> oh, sorry, I'm very honest. <laughs> you know, we are working for this our project now because I know that our client they don't have choice. They mean, the developer they don't have choice. It's very heavy for them, and they they, they are fighting. But 2000, 2020 is dead. I mean. We have August, September, October, November, December, five months. How in, terms of, in terms of request, it would come in during that time period. I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I, I am a designer in several countries. I, I, I don't believe that there is any uh, new clients in this future five months that come at me and say, listen, Rita, we want to, 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 to start amazing uh, project and we want, we have, a, we plan to do this or that. I don't think so. I will be a liar. Uh, you know, I, 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 I will lie to you if I said that. It's not true. I have several projects, but it's project from 2018, 2017, 2018, but it's not from 2020. I think we are living the worst uh, year in our whole life. I mean, I have 47 years. I cannot say to you that when I was young, I lived this year. Did you live? Did you ever live this year? No, it's did unprecedented. I mean, yeah. not for you. I mean, I mean, we, we need to be honest. We, be, we need to be honest with ourselves and with our the people that is following us i mean it's the worst year that we live i don't think so that people they can they can uh, uh, project their, themselves as a developer as a client that i have a very courageous client here in miami that they say no we want to have our house uh, uh, you know uh, go rita please but it, it there are, uh, i mean it, it's an for me it's an example but it's not a, uh, the same case around the world. I'm, I'm working in Barcelona. Barcelona, Barcelona is very, you know, is since uh, last two weeks, everything is stopped. My developers uh, now they are in Barcelona. Uh, uh, they want to finish the first phases, but they stop all the the the, 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 the second phases. They are waiting for what will happen. It's the same it's case in Morocco. I have the many uh, projects like this. I have projects in Dubai, but it's not uh, on the way. It's just, uh, well, Dubai is different because Dubai, Dubai is a different case. I don't want to, to talk about Dubai because they have budget, they are very strong. But I mean, I will be, I, I want to be honest. For me, 2020, I don't want to talk about this year. I think this year we're gonna stay at home. We're gonna be very, uh, close to our family, we're going to follow our developer. We're going to be on their side as we can, as we can, and 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 uh, that's it. Uh, there is for me there is two, no 2020. I cannot talk about 2020. Thank you, thank you, Rita. Chilean, over to you. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, as a retailer, of course, we, w w when you're closed for two, three months, which has been the case in some of the states, I mean, what is lost is lost. I mean, you don't get back to those numbers. I mean, it's almost impossible now. From now on, of course, we have a challenge is to try to limit and to climb back those numbers a little bit towards the end of the year. I'm a little bit more optimistic than Rita in that case, because I see I see a lot of clients actually re-centering re themselves to the hopes yep. because of what's going to be next, because of what's going to be for the next six months, one year, uh, buying a second home, being, and of course, I'm talking about the wealthy clientele here. So of course, they can probably afford to not think about, I'm going to be in financial trouble or something. They're probably good enough for two, three months if they don't make their business. Uh, so we've been seeing actually a good amount of real projects in their stores from people that have a real idea of what they want because we have less traffic. I mean, the food traffic, of course, as you can imagine, is a bit uh, reduced, <clears throat> but the quality of this traffic is very high because the clients took the time 
they have real ideas of changing their homes. As, as Nicole say, I mean, if you, if, if you were not liking your cocktail table for some years, this is really the time that you're gonna hate it because after three months that you're gonna look at it every day, this is the time you wanna change it. So we, we think that there is a, a little chance for our environment with it, which is the retailer and also you as an interior designers, I think, to actually take advantage a little bit of that moment. I know it's horrible to say it like that, but uh, people are gonna, as you say, they're gonna travel less, they're gonna go less to the restaurant, they're gonna go less buying handbags because who's gonna get out? So what is the ultimate thing you can spend your money on? It's probably your home. And, and education, I guess. But I mean, you can do that for relatively cheap. Uh, and, and the home is actually something that people are going to recenter to it. So we have, as a solid brand, if you, if you can get the, 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 the right deal situation and the, 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 um, the real challenge is how you can stay connected to your clients. Even yeah, when but you don't see them, really even when you are closed, it's the connection with those clients. If you can create a good connection with them and if they are, <laughs> uh, things can happen, actually. I understand that what is lost is lost for the past two, three months, especially as a retailer, as you can imagine, when uh, yeah, we have many, many stores uh, in the US been closed for two, three months. Uh, we, we sold a bit remotely, but uh, nothing to do with when you're open. Uh, but there's still a, a hope, I think, for doing something even for the next six months. Thank you. Shalaya. Yeah, but Julia, excuse me, sorry. You are talking about private client. client. And I was work, working, uh, talking about investor client. There is a difference. Of course, private clients, they're going to think more about their home. They're going to change her sofa because they need maybe to have more to, to be more comfortable, but today I, I, I am a designer more for the developers and I, I, when I, I thought, I thought development, I, bought, I thought about investment. It's very hard to, to think about investment or, uh, you know, on, on, a, on this situation. I, I'm, I agree with uh, Julien about the private clients, but for the developers, I can tell you that this situation around the world, I have a developers around the world, and this situation is very, very hard. I know for sure. I mean, I'm talking about what's the, the, the essence of clients at Roche Bobois, it's like residential, it's like private. Yeah. So, of course, okay. they do their, their it's, homes. It's interesting, though, on a lot of our webinars that we've done for Hope Residents with the developers, a lot of them are having record sales right now. So, you think about that that's an end user client. You know that are going into those units that are going to be an end user client. So exactly. there's yeah, a lot I'm, of I'm in touch with the, the the team at uh, One Sotheby's uh, Realty, for example. Yep. You know, and uh, because we do have a few models with them, and they've been reporting me for the last three months. They've been closing like crazy. Yep. Like yeah, so, I mean, we're getting those reports from multiple U.S. markets, which is which is a very good thing. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank all of you for taking the time to speak with us today. Great Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Incredible, incredible work, impeccable brand. Thank you all so much. Wow. Wishing you all to stay very healthy and, and safe. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Lucky Thank you so much. So nice to be with you all. Bye -bye. Stay safe and healthy. We'll Appreciate see you soon. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye.